Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This video is going to be my palettes revisited for June. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is the video where I go back to some of my older palettes and try them again, put them on my face and give you a an update at the end of the month to f share with you how I feel. Do I still like these? Are they still favorites? All that jazz. So let's just get to it. Before we get into the video, it may be good to know who I am and what I like doing on this channel. My name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool neutral undertone and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love trying out eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice, and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, then I hope you would like to consider subscribing. Before we get to the actual palettes that I use this month, um, I have my fan on. We were hit by summer out of nowhere here in the Netherlands, so we are coping. So if you can hear anything whirring in the background, also my door is open and I do, I am filming this on a Wednesday afternoon when all the schools are usually out. So if you can hear kids screaming in the background because they're having a great time playing in like little pools in their backyards, then so be it. Um, so if there, it's a little bit noisy, then I do apologize, but I'd rather not melt while filming this video because it's hot. We're wearing linen for a reason. <laughs> but yeah, this month I went back to one, two, three, four, five, six different palettes again. Uh, I try to do like five or six every single month to also rotate through as many as I can. As I'm filming this, this guy I haven't put on my face yet, but this is a palette that's like featuring in this video series for like the third time. So I know I love this, so I can talk about this without really saying too much. I just wanted to use it again. Um, but these ones, many of these, I haven't gone back to in a while. So I'm super excited to share with you the looks I did and to tell you a little bit more about these ones. Let's start with what's actually on my eyes right now. This is just a quick little look that I did with the Ninhydrin by Adept. And this was one that I sort of, especially because we're having nicer weather, that I was putting off using because Inside, the color story looks quite dark to me. It's quite saturated. Then when I look at what this looks like on my eyes, I don't feel like it looks overly done. So I was looking for something really quick and easy that I could do because it isn't hot weather today. I don't want to wear too much makeup. I'm not wearing bronzer. I only, I'm only wearing a smidge of foundation that I applied with fingers because I know it's just going to melt off my face anyways. And so what I ended up doing with this one, I ended up using this purple here in the corner, um, this multi-chrome all over the lid, and then this on the lower lash line, and this is what's in my inner corner. Super quick and easy little look, and it's the multi-chrome that really is stealing the show here. I feel that multi-chromes are just the best way to get an impactful look without too much effort because they have the shift. So it looks like you're wearing a lot, a lot more eyeshadow than you actually do. Not in terms of like quantity, but like you've put more work into it. Looks like a complete look, whereas I'm only really wearing one shade all over my lid. Then I've tried to blend up towards the brow bone a little bit to have a bit more shine there as well. And I think that that works really well. I'm very happy with this. This is the formula from Adept that I know I like. This was before I tried the Minka palette. This is a little bit easier to pick up with brushes. I still felt I had to go in with fingers um, with this one here, but I do still feel these work with brushes. I can pick them up. I can lay down like a base layer and then go in with fingers to intensify a shimmer on the lid like I did today. And that's my favorite way to apply eyeshadow anyways. I dislike the slightly newer formula from Adept because it's a lot flakier and therefore really difficult to pick up with a brush. The only way to pick it up really well is with fingers. And as you will see really, really soon in my upcoming haul video, I did purchase a new palette from Adept to again, try the formula, but also because they did a really nice cool toned one together with Amy Loves and it finally came to Monolith at the end of May. So I picked it up straight away. Uh, I haven't swatched it yet, so I don't know what those shades feel like yet, but in the pan visually, they look the same as the ones from the Minka. And with the Minka, as much as I love the color story of that one, I feel very limited in what I can do with it because of that flaky formula. 
So I'm really glad I have one of the older Adept palettes that still has the old formula. I think I just don't love that super flaky formula that a lot of indie brands are into. If that's your vibe, totally you do you, but the Nin Hydran doesn't have that. So that's why this is perhaps still my favorite Adept palette. Um, I decluttered the Plain Jane because that didn't have mattes. This one does. This is probably one of my favorites. And of course she can go super grungy and swampy with this like greenish brown that it has. Um, so for me, I can definitely do like a blue, purple, pink sort of look with this side of the palette. And then those greens and the gold go really nicely with that swampy shade. So this is a really nice palette. I can definitely do multiple looks with it. And I'm really glad I kept this one around instead of the Plain Jane. The Plain Jane is something that I gifted to a colleague of mine. Her daughter is apparently really into makeup. She isn't. But when I brought my decluttered makeup to work the other week, they were like, are you giving this away? And my daughter is going to love this. So uh, her daughter already went to school wearing some of those Plain Jane shades, she told me. So Nin Hydrant from Adept. I'm definitely going to be keeping it around. It's a really solid palette by my standards absolutely am i going to be using it a lot no but i definitely now see that this is much more of an all-rounder palette that i had that i had initially clocked it for i thought this was going to be like a one-trick pony because it has so many duochromes and multichromes and as pretty as duochromes and multichromes are they don't always work together if you start combining them with other things i feel they really need their moment to shine and that can make palettes less versatile, I feel. But with this, I feel we get a nice balance. So still loving the Nin Hydrant. I think the palette I was the most impressed with going back to is the Nomad Land of Fire and Ice. I believe this has been discontinued. And because we were having these really nice warm temperatures, I ended up wearing these really spicy warm tone shades in the middle. The only problem I went into when using this is that the... Uh, inner corner highlights we get in here are very cool toned. Like this is just way too cool to cool tone to go with these shades. So it doesn't totally come together, but I did really enjoy the way the look I did came together in the end. I did something like resembling sunset eyes with this. I put this one in the crease, uh, this one all over the lid. Um, this I used on the lower lash line a little bit with the teal and also this brighter number. Um, so that worked out really, really well. And I have to say that that's an, an area that I hadn't explored yet when using this palette in the past. I think at the time I did like a warm toned look with like the brown and these shades. And then I did like a look with like the pastels and the grays that are in here, uh, the greeny grays, and then like these six shades together. Um, but I hadn't really mixed and matched the cool tones with the warm tones just yet, as far as I remember. So yeah, I was able to do a really stunning look with this really happy this confirmed for me yet again how much i love the nomad formula i keep saying that nomad cosmetics is the brand to check out if you want to try indie brands and you're a beginner in makeup because yes the boom kapow pigment that indie brands can offer can look really pretty but it can also be difficult to work with nomad gives you buildable easy to work with quality that's still as impactful you need to work perhaps a, a touch harder for it but I love this formula far more than I do some of my other indie brands. But it, yeah, this palette just confirms me how much I love them. They're doing a new, like, colorful palette I saw the other day. So that's something I'm going to chat about next week when I do my new makeup releases for sure. I think it's called, like, Beachy and Peachy or something like that. I've already seen people doing reviews on it. And it's not my kind of color story, but I already have a bunch from Nomad that I do enjoy. And this one is definitely part of that pack. A tried and true Kaleidos. Um, there are two Kaleidos palettes in this roundup today. This is the uh, Futurism 5, yeah, 5 Electro Turquoise. I never know the number. Inside, you get six shades, and the look I created was with all six of these. So all six of these shades were on my eyes, and I always start the look I do with this palette with that bright orange in the middle, and I use it as a crease shade. Um, I think what I ended up doing is that I put this, oop, there goes a little card. I put that shimmer, the teal shimmer all over the lid. I put the other teals on the lower lash line. This I used as a bit of liner and then this um, um, was in the inner corner as a highlight. And I really liked layering the shimmer over the dark brown as a liner. So I applied some of the dark brown and then layered some of the shimmer back over it to give the liner a less stark appearance and just 
a much more seamless blend with the rest of the look. I didn't want it to be too harsh. And this is one of my best, like my favorite summer nice weather kind of palettes. This is beach and ocean in a palette color story wise. And that's why I really enjoy it. I really like the juxtaposition in this palette of the warm tones with the blues. And it's one of my favorite looks to do for the summertime as well. So I was really happy that I ended up selecting this for June because when I when I selected this at the end of May to go into my June shop my stash, I did not know that we would be having this nice weather and especially the first three weeks of June were not that great. So I'm glad that I saved one of my favorite uh, summertime palettes for later in the month because that way I was able to do one of my favorite looks with it as well. So yeah, this is just, this is an incredibly good palette that just really sees me through all the summertime different looks that I wanna do. Not sure, is this still available? I don't know, I never know the status on these Futurism palettes. They have some of them, but they don't have the full collection anymore. I do know that. Then we have Huda Beauty's Mercury Retrograde. This palette is one of my favorites. You guys know this about me. The large Huda Beauty palettes are some of my favorites in my collection for sure. And I just realized I hadn't gone back to the Mercury Retrograde in some time. So this being a favorite palette, I knew I had to select it again. And when I selected it for my shop, my stash, I was certain that I would use these like rosy tones that it has here because that's my comfort zone when I'm using this palette. The rosy tones on this side are the thing I love. And usually when I use this, I sort of divide it into uh, six tets, so groups of six over here in the middle, uh, in the middle, and then also here towards the end. Um, and I feel that that works really well. So very often that's what I stick to. That's sort of how this palette works in my brain. But this time I decided to revert to warm tones and I we all know this by now I'm having a bit of a warm tone moment this summer and these three shades were taking center stage when I did the look I think I did pull in a little bit of that blue shimmer greenish blue sort of turquoise shimmer it has um, but I mainly focused it on the warm tones and I surprised myself when I decided to do that because I was sitting down to do the look with this palette and I was like you know what I want to do? I want to do something I haven't done with this palette before because combining these three shades, I just hadn't done before. Uh, and I think I actually put this one in the inner corner as well. May have incorporated a bit of this warm tone as well on the lower lash line. So I definitely went with like the warm tones with a pop of green or teal. That's currently really where my brain is going. And not only did the selection that I made make for this video help me making those kind of looks? It's really sort of where my brain is going a lot in terms of color stories I like wearing at the minute. So yeah, the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde is one that I still love and adore. And it's great for me as well to be using these kind of palettes again for a video like this and try to use them in different ways than I've done before. Because when I reach for my favorite palettes, I tend to recreate my favorite look that I did with it the first time I tried it. Um, but I also wanna push myself more to see if I can like combine it with other things or combine shades together that are in the palette that I don't normally think would go together like I did with the Nomad. And this way I feel I can just really make it work. So yeah, Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde, an oldie but a goodie but I definitely feel it has a lot more to offer than I had initially thought it would. Another great summertime palette for me is Odin's Eye Solomona. This is one that was discontinued. This is their old version. They now do a different one that doesn't have this kind of color story at all. And I really enjoy this color story. I have mentioned how I prefer this Odin's Eye quality also over what the brand currently has to offer. So for me, this just works really well. And this time I did stick to my comfort zone. <laughs> my comfort zone look with this palette is this mustard yellow with this all over the lid, this as a bit of liner, and this in the on the lower lash line with a little bit of this shimmer in the inner corner. That's my comfort zone. Again, a warm tone look with a pop of something brighter and lighter on the lower lash line. It's a theme, it's a theme. And I didn't even realize it was a theme until I started like sitting down to film this video. 
I hadn't realized that that's really what I've been going for and these palettes have all just been delivering and I wish that Odin's Eye would bring this back in a new in a new style because I think the formula is really really good and also the color story in this is very much unlike other things I have. Is it very sort of pre-COVID pandemic sort of color story wise? Yes, I think so. That It's definitely not a perfect palette. Some of the mattes are a little bit samey samey in this, but I really enjoy mine. I love the quality and this I think was the first thing I tried from Odin's Eye and I still love it till this day. And finally, the other Kaleidos one that I haven't tried yet as I'm sitting down to film this video, but by the time you're watching this video, I will have managed to do at least one look with this. Uh, I think I'm gonna stick to one look because as I mentioned, this is one I've used before. This is the Club Nebula that they did in collaboration with Angelica Nukvist, who is uh, another YouTuber on here. And this is one of the best color stories in existence in my collection. Uh, if you missed out on this, it was limited edition years ago. So I do apologize, but I love this. And since I'm loving the whole like warm tone with the pop of blue, because I need to do this look tomorrow before I head out to work. I'm thinking these like pinks and corals with some of like the blues and greens that are over here, like those brighter pops of color. That's again, something I haven't done because whenever I use this palette, I tend to stick to the rose. I tend to stick to the blue, blue green row. This is a perfect sort of grungy, but soft neutral leaning purple look. And the bottom row with the pinks and peaches, I tend to just use by itself. But I think I'm gonna have to mix and match this a bit more. So perhaps going warm toned with perhaps this or this on the lower lash line. Yes. And then this in the inner corner. That's the look I want to do. I just know it. <laughs> so I'm not going to go in with the purples and also the greens. I think that those are looks I've already done in the past when I was going back to this previ previously, as I mentioned at the start of the video, this is one that I think I've used for the third time in this series. This is one of my absolute favorite uh, pellets in my collection because it was so difficult to get your hands on it it's one I cherish as well and cherishing my makeup doesn't mean I just hoard it it doesn't mean I just hang on to things for the sake of hanging on to things I also want to use them and this is this video is something I've created to remind myself to go back to things I love and not only try the new stuff that's out there because it's so easy as a creator to get stuck in that rut of only trying the new, new, new and never having time to even go back to older things. So that's why I've tried to slow down on things that I'm bringing in new and so I have some space for going back to older things. And this was another very successful month. I'm really, really enjoying doing the looks for these videos and sitting down to film them. Um, I'll, I'm always a little bit behind, so I always feel like I struggle a bit doing all the looks before I sit down to, to film the video, but this way I think it works just fine. And yeah, all, also your older palettes need a little bit of love and we don't always need the new stuff, uh, even though that may be very tempting indeed. <laughs> I definitely bring in new things all the time. Like every month there's a couple of things I buy. Um, also palette wise, of course, also to keep my reviews on the channel going, um, because I do need to have enough for a review video for it to make sense in my brain anyways. But this way I can get some use out of older palettes, which I just really love and adore. So let me know in a comment down below what palettes you would like to see me use next. I think I already have a bit of a selection for July. Um, and whenever I film videos throughout the months, um, there's always palettes I'm showing you that make me go like, oh, I need to use that again. So then they sort of go on the on the list to be used for this video. Because if I just sit down and I see my entire collection, I have a tendency to select the five same palettes the entire time, which are my absolute, absolute favorites. However, this way, I feel I can select some things that maybe I wouldn't think of at first glance. And now that I've used them again, I'm I've fallen head over heels in love with these again. So thank you so very much for joining me here today. If you do have any requests, leave them down below. And yeah, I will be back with this video again next month. Uh, we're at the end of the month. So I have something very excited for you that will be going live tomorrow because I filmed a ranking of all of the eyeshadow palettes I've tried so far in 2024. And yeah, that means that we're already past the midway point of this year things are going so fast this year 
and I hope to see you very, very soon in a new video. Thanks so much for being here. Take care. Bye-bye.